So here's the final topic from this kinetics chapter. And they have you all drawing the reaction energy diagram of a catalyzed reaction. Uh, now, I, I don't have the same tools that you have, but I will give you a general idea of how to do this and how to understand what it is that you're drawing. So they say sketch a qualitative reaction energy diagram for a chemical reaction with and without a catalyst. Assume the uncatalyzed reaction is exothermic. Now, we'll note that this doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and only qualitative, that means that no numbers involved. You don't have to have exact uh, values for energies and things like that. But you need to have the overall trend. So the first thing we need to note that this is an exothermic reaction. That's very important. Okay. So now let's, uh, let's take a look at how we might sketch this. So this is what uh, it should look like uh, initially. So this would be your uncatalyzed. sketch. So what we have here, uh, you have your y-axis, which represents the energy, and this is the progress of the reaction as it goes, as it moves forward. So initially we have our reactants and in some initial energy state, right? Well, for any reaction, it doesn't matter if the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. It doesn't matter. For any reaction, rusting, burning something, breaking down food, any reaction, there is something called an activation energy that must be overcome before the reaction proceeds forward. Now, that activation energy could be very great or the activation energy could be fairly small. Regardless, there is an initial energy requirement that must be overcome for this reaction to move forward. For an uncatalyzed reaction, uh, the idea is that this activation energy, Ea, EA stands for activation energy. This activation energy requirement or barrier that must be overcome before we can convert our reactants to products for an uncatalyzed reaction is always going to be greater than it is for a catalyzed reaction. That is exactly how catalysts speed up reaction rates. Without a catalyst, the reactants can be converted to products, but not until the energy requirements for the activation energy are met. Well, for a catalyzed reaction, catalysts speed up a reaction by lowering the activation energy requirements. So if you wanted to draw a catalyzed reaction, what you would do is take this hump, this hump here, and bring it down a little bit. Now, you can't bring it down below the energy of the reactants. It's, it still has to reflect that there is still an energy barrier. There's still an activation energy. But what a catalyst will do is decrease that activation energy. It will not eliminate it, but it will decrease it. Okay? So to reflect the catalyzed reaction, you need to lower that hump a little bit. Okay, there still needs to be a hump, but you can lower the hump. The second thing that we need to pay attention to is whether the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. Where that comes into play is, is here. Look at the final energy state. This is energy on the y-axis. Look at the final energy state of our products when the reaction has finished. Initially, the energy state was higher than the final energy state. What does that mean? Well, if the final energy state of your products is lower than what you started with, that means that energy was given off and energy can be given off as heat. So exothermic reactions, we feel heat coming out of those reactions, burning something, oxidation, exothermic reaction because the final state of the products is of a lower energy, uh, potential energy. And so that, that energy um, difference here between the reactants and products is given off to the surroundings as heat, right? That's heat energy. So that would be exothermic. What about an endothermic, an endothermic uh, reaction? Well, for an endothermic reaction, We've got the same setup, 
but the energy state of our products is not lower than our reactants, but higher than where we started. The final state of our products is higher than where we started. That means that there was a net input of energy or heat into the reaction, okay? A net. So for exothermic, there's a net uh, release of energy. You feel it coming out of that reaction. For an endothermic process, there's a net input of energy. So heat is taken in from the surroundings and it feels cool. It feels cold. If you're holding a, a reaction vessel where an endothermic process is taking place, like a, a, a cool pack, uh, you break the seal and it gets cold, that's because heat is being taken from your body, from your hand, and you feel that loss of heat as coldness. Okay? So for the uncatalyzed reaction, you will have, same as before, an activation energy barrier. If you want just to reflect a catalyzed reaction, what you need to do is take the hump right here and decrease it to show that it is catalyzed. What the catalysts do again? Catalysts decrease the activation energy of a reaction. And they do this by introducing um, intermediate steps um, uh, that, that can proceed uh, with smaller energy requirements. So by the introduction of these intermediate elementary steps, the activation energy of this reaction is decreased. So you need to pull this hump down. Take the hump and pull it down. You can't flatten it. You can't show that when you proceed from reactants to products that there is no activation energy. There's no hump there. You can't do that. But you can bring it down some. Perhaps there to show that it is minimized okay, and decreased. 